Thank you, Mr Deputy Speaker. Uh, Professor Stephen Riker, a member of the Behavioural Advisory Group for SAGE and Professor of Psychology at the University of St Andrews in my constituency, said at the weekend that contrary to the impression we might get from reports, the reality is that about 90% of the public are complying with the restrictions to date. And indeed, one of the success stories has been that public compliance. Where people don't comply, and I'm not uh, um, talking about the, the, that very small core of those who are blatantly uh, flouting the rules, it's generally because of practicalities or lack of information. It's about complexity. And I do very much agree with the professor's analysis. The public health messaging in all parts of the UK and in Scotland and England has undoubtedly been complex. It's because it's become clear that these varied and complex systems are too often not backed up with the appropriate support. And in North East Fife, where so much of the hospitality uh, industry relies on tourists from outside the area, businesses are struggling. And a case in point is the Peatin, a restaurant in my constituency that in 2020 was ranked number 23 in their list of the top 50 restaurants in Britain by the Good Food Guide. It is a Michelin star, and as you I might imagine, it is very much an attraction. So as soon as Fife went into level three, meaning that nobody outside Fife could travel into the kingdom and restaurants were not allowed to serve alcohol, the Peatin understandably decided it was no longer profitable for them to remain off open. And their head chef, Nick Briggs, told me that he felt that hospitality was being unfairly singled out and being made to jump through hoops. And of course, because the Peatin generates tourism for North East Fife, um, the fact that it was forced to close has had an impact on other local businesses. The Tarska Vig B&B, who are about a mile down the road from the restaurant, also got in touch with me. Their business is at least 50% peat in customers. So when the peat in shut, all but one of their bookings cancelled. And they have really struggled for support anyway. Because they pay council tax rather than rates, they've been ineligible for the hardship funds and relief rates relief. They've been excluded from support. And in all these general debates, we've talked a lot about those who've been excluded. And I continue to urge the government to do more. There will be many more small businesses like the Task of B&B across Scotland and the rest of the UK, and many more restaurants like the Peat Inn. Many of the small business owners in my constituency are still waiting to access some of the 185 million of funding that was announced by the Scottish Government in early December. And my constituency team and I were very pleased to hear the Scottish Government confirmation of support yesterday, but it's vital that these schemes get up and running as soon as possible. January is very difficult financially for many at the best of times. And it was disappointing to hear the Chancellor's statement yesterday. Last March, we accepted that support would be best delivered using existing mechanisms. But now we find ourselves in a third English lockdown, relying on the same schemes, which haven't been sufficiently tweaked, modified or developed to cope with the later stage of the pandemic. It is not right. I would urge the government, now is not the time to step back from support. Now is the time to make sure that businesses are equipped with what they need to survive.